Have you ever heard someone say, they have potential? <laughs> I remember a particular teacher say that to me in high school. At first, I was thrilled that I had something to aspire to. Then, the more I thought about it, I realized that it was, in fact, an in expression of disappointment from that teacher. I was not measuring up. That word potential is at once a statement of possibilities and failure. Actors find it hard to understand the concept sometimes. It's a matter of knowing what you are capable of and then judging if you have demonstrated those capabilities. Do you have acting potential? <laughs> Let's get into it on this very special episode of Casting Actors Cast. It's time for another episode of Casting Actors Cast, insights for actors from a casting director. Here he is, your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm casting director Jeffrey Dreisbach. I'm a casting partner with the McCorkle Group in New York. We're very, very busy at McCorkle Casting, and I'm really, really excited that you are joining us today. I want to share with you that the podcast continues to grow uh, exponentially, and I'm really thrilled that you are here. If you're new to the episodes, I invite you to go to the website, Casting Actors Cast, all one word, dot Com. There's a place that says dive into the talent pool. And what that means is you give me your name and your email address in return for free. I give you access to a video, uh, access to a video called, wow, Casting Secrets, What They Don't Tell You. Um, and that's a 20 minute video all about what casting director's secrets might be. Um, how else can I say that? Also, there's a free book. It's a downloadable 100-page PDF that you can have called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voice of a workshop for professional actors. It's 100 pages. It's absolutely free, all about doing voiceover work. I still get mail from a lot of actors who are saying, you know, how do I get into voiceovers? Listen, this is the book that I encourage you. And listen, it's absolutely for free. You can get it on Barnes and & Noble and Amazon and places like that, but why not have a free downloadable PDF that you can read at your leisure. Uh, a lot of folks have given me some feedback on how much they are enjoying the book, and you can have that absolutely free. Oh, by the way, when you give me your name and email, uh, I don't spam you with stuff. I don't send out stuff. I don't try and do promotional, you know, money things like that. I don't do any of that at all. Um, uh, this podcast is absolutely dedicated to helping actors get more information, get more comfortable and more confident in their acting work. That's all I'm about here. So you're in safe hands if you give me your email address. I might occasionally send out a promotional email about an upcoming podcast, but that's it. Nothing, nothing crazy, I promise you. Um, so also, this is my moment where I get to say and thank you to my good friends at Actors Connection, actorsconnection.com slash New York. Um, they're all online now, and Actors Connection is a way for actors to work side by side and really get to know agents, casting directors, managers, people, and professionals in the industry. Everything is virtual. Everything is online. So no matter where you are in the world, you can check out actorsconnection.com slash New York. Thank you to my good friends, Colleen and Tony. And um, by the way, uh, you'll see me on occasion teaching at Actors Connection. It would be a great opportunity for me to get to meet you, I hope. And I hope you might feel the same. So please consider doing that. All right, let's jump into the subject today. Now, I, I understand that this is going to be a little more cerebral uh, concept today. Um, and I just felt that maybe it was time to talk about that because... That word potential is such a trigger word for me personally in a lot of ways. In fact, I never, ever use it <laughs> because I heard it as a kid. You have so much potential. But it was always done and framed in kind of a negative way. And so I really want to address that concept for actors of potential. And by the end of this podcast, I'm going to hopefully reveal something that might strike, and I hope strikes a chord with you about how to really deal with and handle that word, potential. 
Um, like I said, it was a trigger word for me. Now, listen, um, my disqualification here for, for even trying to delve into the subject is I am not a therapist. I'm not a psychotherapist. Um, I just have a lot of life experience. Um, I've also been in therapy a lot. So I do have that going for me because I think every actor should probably have a little therapy under their belt. I think it's really cool to get some information about yourself um, and how you think and why certain things trigger you in ways. Um, I just think that kind of in-depth understanding of who you are can be really helped by uh, therapy. Um, so we're going to talk about that word potential um, and really talk to you about the issues that you might be having with that, not only that word, but with the emotional content of what that phrase, having potential, is all about. So let's talk first and foremost about issues with potential. Because I wouldn't have this podcast unless I thought that there were some issues surrounding it. Number one, um, I think issues that surround the phrase of having potential is that it's really about your own personal expectations versus what others think. So it's one thing for you to know that you have potential to do well. That's different than somebody else laying that label on you. Oh, you had so much potential. You have so much potential, dot, 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 right? Like fill in the blank, the big but. You have so much potential, but you're not showing your full potential. You know, those are the sort of, that dichotomy between your own expectations and what others are thinking of you can really play um, a big number on your head. Number two, I think sometimes... Um, that phrase means that you need to live up to an unrealistic goal. You know, I have potential to be a world-class skier. Now, if I only could learn how to ski. <laughs> so living up to an unrealistic goal versus understanding and having a full picture that is available to you. So if I want to be a world-class skier, what does that look like? What does that feel like? So I want a picture and I want more information about what a professional skier has to deal with and go through. And then perhaps my expectations are going to be a little more manageable because the goal is more defined based on those choices that I see. I hope that that makes sense. Number three, there's a difference when you talk about potential, whether it is self-talk or an external assessment. That's like that teacher in high school. And that teacher in high school saying, you know, Jeff, I, you have so much potential to do really well, but I just fill in the blank. So what you tell ourselves, gosh, I could have done so much better. I know that this is in me to do better. Why didn't I do better? That's the self-talk. What's also potentially negative is that external assessment coming from others. Boy, that Billy boy, he could have done so much better. He had all of those great opportunities and he did nothing with them. Boy, there's nothing more painful than that. So we can annihilate ourselves with our own self-talk or we can make ourselves vulnerable and open to that external assessment from others. That can be hurtful as well. Also, when we talk about potential, um, there's this implied assumption that that is action versus inaction. <laughs> uh, action meaning that you didn't do enough. You didn't work hard enough. You didn't achieve enough. You didn't push yourself enough versus inaction. You had all of these opportunities and you did nothing with them. That's painful, isn't it? And that's something that I think we need to dig deep sometimes and really analyze that voice in our head, but also those external voices that we get from others. So what does that mean? That means, I think, in my mind, there are some corrective actions that should be taken when we talk about potential. How do you fix that? How do you fix those negative implications when we talk about potential? Well, here's one. One suggestion is never think in terms of what could be better, but rather what is. 
In other words, being in the moment is so much more valuable than thinking of how could this moment be better? Does that make sense? And so when we think in terms of the bigger picture, sometimes we paint ourselves into a negative corner. So staying in the moment and staying very, very present, not only with others, but with your own thought process, I think is a great way to help yourself. Number two, my suggestion is to reverse the self-defeatist talk and move into a different way of thinking. For example, one way might be, I did the best I could. When was the last time you said that to yourself and really meant it? I did the best I could. I couldn't do any better. The circumstances, the situation, uh, the energy, the blah, 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 that was the best I could do. You know, that perfectionistic side of us always says something to the, to the effect of, there's always something better you could make. There's always something better you could do. There's always room for improvement. Well, you know what? Screw that. You need to reverse the self-defense talk and move into a place that says, I did the best I could so that you can move on from that. Here's another suggestion. Stop using the phrase, I wish I could have dot, dot, dot. Fill in that blank. I wish I could have had more time with the script. Well, listen, the time you have with the script is the time you have. Well, how could you change that? You can wish that you had more time with the script, but if you only had a limited amount of time and you use that time to the best of your ability, why would you even use that phrase? So the phrase, I wish I could have done this, I wish I could have felt this, I wish I could have perceived that, those are all just wasted energy. And you would be, I think, in a healthier place if you just decided that you were going to stop yourself, stop using that phrase. That took me a long time, by the way. I'm, I'm sort of like uh, trying to practice what I'm preaching here, but that took a long time. That self-talk is something that we can really put a lot of energy into and not in a good way. See, I see many actors that have a challenging time going from professionalism in their acting um, to suddenly becoming a student almost instantly. In other words, I love uh, when actors come in and then they're auditioning or they're sending a self-tape or whatever, but the minute that a director has a note or the casting director has a comment, immediately that actor becomes suddenly a student. And you know what? That's something that I would suggest you let go of as much as you can. We've had all of this conditioning all the way through high school and college, perhaps MFA degree, whatever, professional training. We still revert to being the student in some of those situations. When my suggestion is taking directions needs to be filtered through the lens of collaboration and not education. Does that make sense? A professional would collaborate with the other and not put themselves in the position of, well, teach me. The actor does not need to be taught. The actor needs to be in a collaborative frame of mind and that relationship with the director is equally professional. And so changing your perception is really important that you don't revert to being a student in some of these situations. Now, I know that's hard, and I'm not asking you to just be this kind of consummate professional head all the time, but in order to really get the most creative energy out of who you are and what you're doing, a change in the perception that you are a professional, you're talented, you're gifted, you know what you're doing, you are no longer a student of acting but now you're a professional actor. So be that. So when I also hear the word potential, I find that the word potential is either a statement about lost, it's lost opportunity, or it's a negative qualifying statement from someone else. So 
having awareness that that's what the word potential can mean is something that I think needs to be thought of. Um, for example, if you say to, about somebody, oh, she has so much potential. <laughs> what does that really mean? Does that mean that you are hopeful or does that mean that you are coming to a place of making that person less than? That's why I think it's um, potentially very harmful when you talk about potential. Here's some statements, I think, to begin reversing that word potential in your mind. Now, these are statements that I would love for you to write down, or you can get the notes on Jeff's Jots on the website about this particular episode. Um, and really using these statements as sort of a, a, a new mantra for yourself. See if this is very useful. Um, by the way, I'm going to try this. I'm just going to leave little moments after each of the statements so that you can repeat this out loud to yourself. Okay, I know this is weird, but just try it. Why not just try it? See if it changes your perspective in any way. All right, so I'm going to leave, I'm going to make the statement, then I'm going to leave a little bit of a blank for you to repeat the statement to yourself. Okay, so if you're walking, or you're jogging, or you're working out, or you're in your car, whatever, just try this. Say it out loud. I am fully aware of what is happening in the moment. Next one. I embrace the immediate circumstances of the given situation. I'll repeat that. I embrace the immediate circumstances of this given situation. I am staying connected with my creativity, which has no judgment. My life experience has brought me to this moment, and it is good. Potential is a myth. Energy is the truth. The only disappointment is of my own invention. I embrace connection with others and reject hurtful self-talk. All right, now while it may seem like this is more semantics than it is empowering, acting is still at its core a creative endeavor that is almost childlike in its execution. We need to love that part of ourselves and nurture the strength to perform without judgment. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thank you for joining me. This is Casting Actors Cast. Thank you for joining Casting Actors Cast. Please don't forget to review, like, and share Casting Actors Cast wherever you get your patios, podcast videos. Thanks. I'm Megan Grace Martinez.